After the storm, life re-emerges. Those hunkering down return to new challenges. And those who rode it out have to make major decisions. <laughs> Food from the street that became a country's pride. Through times good and bad, the cooks fed the country. Here at the table are their stories of generations and aspirations. The voices of the hawker culture from inside the belly of a nation. June. The circuit breaker lifts over two phases. The barriers come off in the second phase. People once again dine in and interact in limited numbers. In this almost normal situation, hawkers who have been hunkering down over the months re-emerge. My store is located at Central Business District. It means that there will be zero food for. So I just shut down for two, two months uh, until June which recently, which I, three weeks ago, which I just reopened. My name is Delonix Tan Weijie, so I sell fishball noodle and yong tauhu. Weijie actually does double duty. During the day, he's at his stall at Amoy Street Food Centre. And overnight, he helps out in his family's fish paste business in Tuapayo. They make fish balls from scratch. It's all in the family, from his father to grandmother. Since the 1960s, right, my grandfather started the, uh, making fish balls in Tauhu. La. So after that, uh, he passed on to my dad. Okay, so basically, we get like yellow tail fish, right? And then we chop it into pieces. After that, at, since midnight, la, and we start to process them, etc., without using any surimi or any starch la, or preservative. So basically, the water has to be cold so that the, the, the fish meat can mix well and properly. La. I don't know the scientific reason behind it, la, but my grandfather has been doing that, so we just stick to the tradition and continue doing that. Everything is very manual, it's by, by few. They, my father needs to touch the fish meat to eat. So we're continuing adding water or stuff like that. La. So it's very essential for us to have the to feel the stuff. La. It's different if you use, use, use the glove. Very different. Then comes the mesmerizing part. The fish paste is skillfully squeezed into balls. They are all even in size. Then into tap water to keep them fresh. The paste is also used as stuffing for yong tau fu, or stuffed tofu literally, but that is a descriptive failure. Yong tau fu has hakka origins, but the Singapore version consists of an assortment of ingredients which are stuffed and slathered with fish paste. These are quickly boiled and served with or without noodles. Soup is optional. But the sauce, made of sesame, soy, red yeast, etc., is definitely required. With ingredients that he helps to make and a little experience in cooking them, Wei Jie went into business with assistance from NEA. So basically, uh, last time I've always been helping my dad out like, in, during NS, and then I feel that no, like, there's not many handmade fishball noodles in, Ontario, in Singapore anymore. So the more I do, I also feel actually I kind of like this kind of, this kind of lifestyle. I'm like, very hectic, you know, the F&B and stuff like that. And I also always wanted to start my own business. So I came across, I stumbled across this NEA incubation program. Because you need to be 21 to be eligible for a store in, for, under NEA. So immediately after I turned 21, I went to apply for that. So I only received the verdict this, uh, I think it's San Yue, uh, this, this, this year San Yue. Yeah, then I went to sign. Then I went to open my store in April. La. When I opened in April, quite sweet. La. After only four days of operation, right, the government announced that on the 7th of April, there will be, there will be this CB, la, the what they call circuit breaker. Now that he has returned to the stall, life is busy. Five days at the hawker centre and four nights in the wet market. I hope that my body is able to take it lah, because now I work, I have no off day basically. I'm also very lucky that my girlfriend is very, like, she, re she helped me a lot lah. I wouldn't make it through the first few weeks without her. The food centre used to be busy at lunchtime, but not anymore. In the quiet, 
the novice hawker gets whatever practice he can. For me personally, I feel that my upgrade is around, that's my personal opinion, uh, seven, seven or around eight. Uh. Sao, uh, sao, uh. Okay, la. Uh. Huh? A bit salty, yeah. Uh. I think okay, eh? I think a bit salty. No, I think it's okay. Eh? I think it's okay. Eh? I scared to blend, eh? The problem now lies with me, which is the noodles, uh, which is the skill to cook the noodles. Because I'm still quite new and the, the noodle cooking skill really needs some time to develop. My girlfriend is currently helping me. You know, I'm very stressed, you know, running tight on cash, etc. So she offered to help me. Yeah. But she'll be going into uni in September, which is quite a headache for me. I need to think of another solution. Also hunkering down over the months was Madam Leong. At 91, She's reputedly Singapore's oldest hawker. With COVID-19 still threatening, her daily routine has been tweaked. She used to do her own marketing, but now she sits back while her son Michael takes over the job. So it's really very, very boring for her for the last two months. Two years in the house, you can't see the news, you can't see the news. She couldn't breathe because you know, if she's to wear the mask uh, throughout the whole day, then you know, breathing is a problem. So we uh, went to see the doctor and he advised that you know, maybe the face shield should be adequate for the, the time being. Stay for a long time. She is a perfectionist. She wants things done her way. And uh, yeah, so we just have got to respect it and you know, just take it you know, that this is her. She's known for her wantan mean or wantan noodles and has fed generations of Singaporeans over the course of 60 years in her business. The shop is right smack in the CBD. And despite the lifting of restrictive measures, the area is still deathly quiet. Ya the months of restrictions tested the resilience of hawkers. For one group, their patience finally paid off. They've been waiting for more than half a year to make a comeback. They waited patiently. They call themselves the Three Good Guys, and we met them in the previous season. Here's their backstory. They had a stall at Golden Mile Food Centre. They were complete food novices. They sold mala xiang guo, which isn't Singaporean, but Chinese, translated as numbingly spiced stir-fry. It sounds better in Chinese. Business was good, then business got bad. We were somehow hesitating whether to really move out from there, and end of the day, we came up with the decision to relocate. They moved temporarily into a bar. There's investor that actually came to look for us. Yeah, so we thought of it for quite some time, whether do we want to do it or not. But because we want to try out things, we don't want to be stuck at just one business only, so we like, okay, Good exposure yeah. for us. Mm. Initial plan for us to start this bar is to also sell our food here. 
But um, the, the bad thing is we don't have a kitchen. Yeah. So yeah, we can't cook. <laughs> so the initial plan was wasn't be able to carry out. Like. The plan now will actually be uh, we will still be running, which is definitely for sure. We will actually be looking for location. That was in March. All their plans came to a halt due to the circuit breaker. During that time, we actually do our own delivery. We actually sell our signature mala wings and then uh, some of our mushroom and stuff. Since I'm at home, then sometimes nothing to do, then we just do a bit of craft food. Then until 19 June, then we start to actually come out to search for location. They were not the only ones looking for a new place. So was their former neighbour, Shafiq, who sells gourmet burgers. Since the beginning of the year, he has been trying to branch out because the centre where he's at is due for a major renovation at the year's end. It would be a problem for us because we wouldn't have a three months of revenue and all my staff would be out of job. Just before the circuit breaker was announced, he had won the bid for a stall in Alexandra Village Food Centre, but he couldn't proceed. We won the bid, but due to COVID as well, any office is closed and you know we can't go down to sign the TAs and everything, so it's still in the process. And we've been waiting for three months already. So hopefully by next month, things will get back to, to normal, you know, office start to open again and we can actually proceed from there. He hopes to take something from Golden Mile to the new location, if and when it's ready. He draws inspiration from one dish that's plentiful at the centre. Soup tulang, or bone marrow stew. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Soup tulang is 100% Singaporean. Created with leftover mutton bones, which are boiled down and served in a screamingly red, spicy, tomato-based sauce. The payoff is the marrow inside. Whatever meat that's on the bones falls off easily. The super tender flesh, together with the bright red sauce, presents an intriguing flavour profile. You had the tulangs from the Indian, you know, the red tulang. So we did uh, a full beef steak, full beef brisket, to, to incorporate with the soup tulang. So we are still doing the R&D base, but we are almost there. So here we already have, uh, you know, the, the beef brisket that is already boiling for already six hours. So it's going to be boiled all the way for 24 hours till the next day before we actually actually shred it. Uh, we use the same stock. From the colouring, we actually add the paste. So basically, it's a mixture of uh, onion, chilies, pepper, mainly a lot of spices inside. This is a already shredded beef, already pulled while it's hot. So after this, I'm going to actually cook it again. We heat it up on a pan, you know, on, on a hot plate to give it a bit of the char flavour as well. We season a bit a bit. We'll just add in the stock to give it like a, you know, usually the French like to call it deglaze. We scrape the bottom a bit. Now we're going to show you the, the brioche bun. This is a single patty we serve, 100 to 120 grams. So we just put a bit of a mayonnaise to ease off a bit on the spiciness. All right, then lastly, we're going to have the fries. The pulled beef soup tulang style burger also goes under the cover of his signature charcoal bun. Shafiq finally gets permission to start up his new stall. It's all systems go. Today is the final fitting day. He gives the branch a look that says a new gen hawker owns it. What we did differently from the previous stall is we wanted a new outlook, a different vibe to, to, to the hawker. Because as you know, we've been serving gourmet hawker burgers and what can you know we stand out from from the other competitors you know doing something different yeah do something where people can take picture and everything or maybe you can take something. yeah there's no roof you know covering the, the store so we had to actually get a net to cover up some hygiene purposes because you know at the top there might be birds you know some dead all coming down to, to the food so you know, roughly, we spent a few thousand dollars on doing up. You can see a really very different vibe in terms of uh, Godama and uh, Alexandria Village. 
Out in the east, Chef Chick has been waiting for the restrictions to end so that he can continue playing with new ideas. He and his wife run a hawker stall selling Cantonese specialty dishes. They decided to take a short break when the circuit breaker was announced. They return after a month, but to change circumstances. Singapore hawkers, as a general rule, specialize in one dish. This tradition goes back to the time when they roamed the streets and had limited resources. It's a bit different with Chef Chick. As a former executive chef from Hong Kong, he offers quality soups, a range of steamed items, and other dishes that are off menu. These are called Sifong Choi, or roughly Chef's Choice. Sifong Choi, now he is able to return to his Sifong Choi idea. Today's special is lotus rice with squid. The lotus leaf is softened in hot water. The rice is fried with a special paste. The squid is lightly marinated with roasted garlic. They go over the cooked rice, and the dish is given a quick steam. To go with the rice, there's claypot braised octopus with pork belly and intestines. And steam tails of sea bass with salted black beans. One hawker who has stuck to the same dishes year in and year out, however, is excited about the changes brought on by a new creation. Mr. Te, who sells cha kui tiao and chai tao kui, has been eagerly awaiting the restrictions to lift and for life to resume normalcy somewhat. He has been waiting for this moment for months. In his arms is his first grandson, who emerged into the world during the circuit breaker period. <laughs> The child will be taught the Teochew dialect. It's his parents' choice in an effort to preserve the heritage. Mr. Tay shares the same zeal for his business, but he has to surmount a few obstacles first. Together with his son Walter, he runs two stalls selling cha kui tiao or fried rice noodles and chai tao kui or fried carrot cake. His wife and daughter operate the stall at Bukit Panjang, while he and Walter look after the one at Kampong Admiralty Food Centre. For reasons of his health, Mr. Tay has decided to call it quits at Admiralty. Ah,
，佢希望过来不给颁奖呢，好好多在颁奖这个，那个那个节目呢，做出如更贵的水准来，大家讲，在顾客，就知道，啊。A month later, Mr. Tay receives some news, and his plan may have to be shelved. 因为今日真正粗卡个，因为我坐过来，身体已经出出了淡薄问题，所以呢，我就想啊，当啊，爱尽快找人来来倒卡手啊，来来维持我这个这个生意。所以我就落去楼下买报纸，再拄着个朋友，哎，伊就讲推荐我问我，但系哎，你你爱请人嘛，哎，爱叫人来甲你做嘛。啊，我姓黄，叫荣杰，等人家都叫我阿吉啦，啊，等我来自马来西亚，现在已经移民过来这边生活了。这个土地呢，就增加增加好好用，因为伊各方面伊做这个市场做这个市场已经做了廿十年，啊。真正做行业，今伊伊个有做过。以前我做过炒炒鸡呃鸡饭，炒精致米粉，然后还有做过一些杂菜饭之类咯。我也蛮喜欢吃 KFC 的，所以说就是说想去学多一个手艺。马来西亚的大多数都是呃比较比较小小颗吧，而且他们是是偏咸的。新加坡是带甜的，因为他们有放那个甜酱，还在学习当中啦。因为还不大熟练，要多多学习，最多是六十八线的。可能可以配比较难学，因为它比较复杂，有有有大辣、小辣，又又又黑又白，啊，太太很多种款式啊，变成说要时间去适应了。火的孔头也要去拿捏，有时候太烧就要去调小一点哦。在开始炒的时候，就是要开火下油。之后就是放开了盖来炒，而且要打散那个鸡蛋，你怎样弄到它均匀，这些都是一个很考功夫啊。只要你手手不不灵活的话，是很难炒的，而且炒了来不及的话，就是会超搭之类。所以说，嗯，真的是要多多练习在这一方面哦。He comes early and practices in a darkened hawker centre. As soon as the lights come on, a kit must be ready to face the hungry customers. Today marks the end of his three-day trial. Mr. Tay assists with the cooking, but only to fry char kway teow. This is one of those dishes that causes disputes whenever someone claims his favorite stall does it best. But one thing is for sure, it takes skill to cook it. Made of rice flour, the kuitiao is mixed with the wheat-based Hokkien noodles. Kuitiao mi ai chi mo ge me, ne je ge me na yi ju teng teng zang hu yi ju chui chui ge. Kuitiao chi an de cha ge, kuitiao an de de tua ge ju si ge tiao. He marinates them in a soy sauce mixture. Ge tao yu de pui liao de, ge na wu ge na ge 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 pui huang an de xian yang. 其实都配得好，伊个把伊个伊个果条出来个个个香味就够，即料来配呢有，加姜有放淡薄提补好，料个伊个花露来爱料得好，料个主要就是伊个麻油泡，伊个麻油泡你啊你啊当当当当炸了好啊，伊就有香头啦。Into this go slices of fish cake, eggs. Noodles, black sweet sauce or tiam chiu, and fresh cockles. Hey, this kway teow, ah, is that? Look, it's good, 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 good Today is the day for decisions. Mr. Tay judges his apprentice's work. Ah, 师傅好吃吗？啊，好吃，好吃。嗯，嗯。
今天呢，我就呢特地呢就把这个档口呢交给你去管理，让你好好的去经营，就是哦，就就就这样哦，啊，那么啊，师傅就把那两只虾我自己装作的就交给你，啊，然后就啊好好的经营这样啊 ，OK 啊 ，OK。Another mantle was passed during this period. Mr. Lee runs a sate bihun stall in Red Hill Food Center. It's a business that's more than 60 years old and was handed to him by his father. Before the circuit breaker, it appeared that he was the last in the line. But since then, one of his sons decided to step up. I went to open my own shop selling salad, but uh, it was a failure. Not too much. 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 Not too I first came down to the market at the age of 15. 15, I worked for three years, then I went to NS. I'm not going to change anything. Uh. This will be the tradition of what is passed down by my grandfather to my father to me. My grandfather is a oil. He 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 is อ่าโยคังโคยามาเนี่ยมาบอกเปลี่ยนเที่ยวอืมที่ไรเชียวหูนั่งจิ้มแม่จ่าไรไก่จ่อหูเองจ่อหลูหลูหลูทำกระติก
usually per pot that we, we are cooking, it will yield approximately 60 over kg per pot. We are going to cook the rice and cook the rice. We are going to cook the rice and cook the rice. We are going to cook the rice and cook the rice. We are going to cook the rice and cook the rice. 5 kg production last time per pot. And one day, the whole day process, we only can produce 3 pots. <laughs> okay, and now the final finale. We will be adding in the peanut paste and So supply is cut to a food court, la. This guy is pass it to la. Ah, he is guy who does salary, who guy who is training, la. Training guy who is gravy, who is doing, la. On the back of a paste and a dish, the Lees have kept the business going for two, now three, generations. But as the industry slowly transitions from one generation to another, the character of the hawker culture itself may well change. Towards the end of the circuit breaker, a group of new visitors started making their rounds in hawker centres. They are digital ambassadors. Their mission is to help propel the hawker industry into the new age with a cashless payment initiative called Hawkers Go Digital. The Hawker Centre is a time capsule of old recipes, heritage food and working methods that are mostly analogue and tactile. The industry is one of the most cash-dependent in Singapore. COVID-19 accelerated the need to transition to cashless payments in order to minimise contact between persons. But this is an uphill task. Because of their age, the majority of hawkers aren't tech-savvy. It's equally trying for the younger ones who work alongside the old. Hanan is the third-generation hawker of a nasi biryani stall. He works with his father, and they have a customer base made up of long-time regulars. So far, their system is still basic cash and carry. Last time, only use cash. So now you need card. Now recently, we just have nets. So uh, people are uh, you know, coming using Pela, using nets. So it's like, I think moving forward, but slow. Lah. Uh, I think for us in Gelang Serai, because we you know, still have machi machi, like pachi pachi, still prefer using cash. Going cashless is also an uphill task for Debbie. She is a young hawker who works alongside older staff, including the boss, her grand aunt. She's been trying to introduce a bit of zing into the business, now in its fourth generation. She created a lunchtime service that's a twist on zi cha, or cook and fry dishes, prettying them up with a poke bowl style. But payment is strictly a hand over the cash system. Ordering is verbal. There's no cashier machine, which many young hawkers use nowadays to lighten the load. It's black or white, right? You don't have to have shouting, you know? You know, one order comes in, right? They have to shout at least three times or four times to each other. So my aunt will shout to the picker. The picker will repeat like, huh? Chow fun. Ah, me, me, yang zhou chow fun. Me, xian yu chow fun. Huh, new roll chow fun. You know, it gets back and forth, back and forth because there's communication involved, you see. And they are a bit old, their hearing may not be the best, so it gets confused all the time. And then, when the picker picks the food to the chef, the chef is like, ah, it's not sandwich, it's fun, it's not sandwich, it's not sandwich, it's not You have three person or four person shouting for one day, for one order, which I think is very unnecessary, you see. Because if you just have a ticket, you know, and you just go like, this is, this is, this is the chow fun, you know, there's no point arguing. 
Okay, when I tell my grand aunt, look, why don't you have a cashier system where you put your money and you did, did, did. You don't have to calculate what, $15, $10, $5.90. You don't have to calculate. You just tap, up, up. The number come out, you take money. No la, no la. You have a cashier. Somebody gonna take the whole cashier, go run and I cannot run. She rather have her small little tong, uh, slowly count the money, uh, mental sum, one plus one. Uh, okay la, okay la. If that works for you, I mean, okay, fine. To prove a point, Debbie experimented with a contactless order and payment system earlier in the year. It didn't get far because the circuit breaker stopped the flow of customers. So going cashless for her is still a work in progress. Other works in progress seem to be moving more smoothly. The three good guys who had spent a good part of the year searching for a location finally settles into a coffee shop at Kim Tian Road. We get to know the landlord over here, pretty nice guy. And then uh, we do a little bit of negotiation, and then after which, you know, we decide to say, let's do it. Lah. The trio has now become a quartet with a new member. The name remains the same, not the menu, however. What we actually do is we are doing a little bit of fusion. We do bento, right, those kind of uh, lunchbox, okay? And then we also do skewer, we do western, okay? And this time around, we actually infuse with mala, salted egg, and of course, with different other sauce, which we will review in the, in the later part of the business lab. The stall isn't operational for a few weeks yet. There's some rudimentary work to be done. Today, the gas pipes are being installed. Once that's completed, the guys can begin their trial cooking. They tweaked their culinary style too. No more hot woks, but a flat top grill. Mm. 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 The display must be better. Yeah. It, it brings back some memories, like how we used to uh, previously work at Golden Mall. Yeah, some of the. Of course, our, our skills are still not rusty yet. Yeah. We also want to make sure that people know that actually the food business is still doable. Even with COVID lockdown, it is still doable. The optimism of a business reinstated isn't shared by those who wonder if they should call it a day. One of the newest signboards in the CBD didn't stay around long enough to gather dust. After briefly re-emerging in June, Weitier decided to close down his fishball noodle business. He moved his signboard to his father's fishball stall in the wet market. So basically, uh, at Amoy Street, right, like, we realised that like, the crowd is still very bad. La. And then also, like, we spoke to the majority of our customers, then they told us like, most of them will only be coming back like, next year onwards. So it's like, instead of continuing throwing money into this black hole, we decided to like, just cut it off. La. Like, Tantong Puru Chang Tong. So as for now, we plan to, I mean, plan to take a break and help my help out my dad, but we will still be operating at the Topayo, Topayo store. I don't think I will be a hawker, because from this experience, I feel that it's like, it's, firstly, it's very, very tough work, and then it's like, the margin is very, 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 very thin. So as of now, my idea is like, after this experience, I don't think I would want to be a hawker. Madam Leong, who's been a hawker all her life, also made a critical decision when her lease came up for renewal. At 91, she has witnessed massive transformations in the country, and she moved from one location to another, finally settling down at this one. For two decades, her signboard has witnessed life on China Street. But this will be its last night. Madam Leong has decided to move on. Chanai what 
同事，我做咗幾十年啦，我啲精神窿中喺曬嗰個男生嗰度啦，幾誒將近六十年啦。你話咁我點捨得咧？慢慢等下啦，我揾到好嘅地方，東山再起，我會打電俾你哋。我喺報紙會通知咗你哋同網上。Meanwhile, Shafiq, who has settled into this new location, has had time to assess the results. So we've been here for a month now. Surprisingly, the the crowd from Alexandria and our first outlet in in Gunung Mal is a totally different crowd. You know. In Gunamal, it's more of a, like I mentioned previously, it's more of a 50-50 kind of crowd. You know, we got a Muslim crowd, we got a non-Muslim crowd. But in Alexandria, it's more of a, the non-Muslim crowd, 80%, I can say. And and the surrounding, there's a lot of uh, industrial estate as well. So uh, lunchtime, dinner time, the the mixture of crowd, surprisingly, it's actually a uh, it was a shock for us. It was good. We didn't expect it to 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 be a good response. This has been the first piece of good news in quite a while. Earlier in the year, he tried to promote his new brand of burgers at a pop-up booth, but met with lackadaisical results. He tried to branch out with a much-desired stall, but he lost the bid. He settled for a brunch in a CBD coffee shop, but the circuit breaker stemmed customer flow, and he was forced to close after a month. He worried that with scheduled renovations at the Golden Mile Food Centre, he would be left without a shop. But finally, he got the keys to a new stall, and business is good. A turnaround that culminated in the biggest change in his life. Janji setia amanah yang diambil oleh seorang suami. Ia merupakan satu amanah yang besar. On this happy occasion, however, the menu is not about burgers. We have soto ayam and sate goreng for our appetizer. Then followed by mutton dum briyani, fried tandoori chicken. Uh, cereal prawn, dal chow, and uh, pickle acha. A dessert, which is uh, eclair, cream pao, fruit tart, and brownies. It's a mixed culture, yes. A bit Asian, a bit Western, and a bit Chinese. <laughs> For social distancing reasons, the crowd is restricted to no more than 50 people. A wedding party made as cosy as is allowed. If there's one thing that the year has forced many to do, it's to adapt to change. Hawkers have had to learn how to work with others in the community, relying more than ever on social media. This situation is quite interesting because it forces us to actually think very quickly on our feet. So I think from this, it actually pushes us to do a lot of things that we always thought that we want to do, but we're like, ah, I can do it in the future, you know? Like, for example, take delivery, for example. As they navigate the future, will the old ways give in to a new normal? The new normal, but hopefully, is like the old normal. <laughs> hopefully, lah. the old and the new normal. I think this this will be the new normal where there will be lesser people in the CBD, maybe about 30-40% increase. And then this is the new normal of the crowd that we will get. Lah. And another thing about, I think this mask thing and will be will be a long-term thing. Lah. We won't have to, you have to keep wearing it. Lah. Hopefully they can make it reduced to a speed guard or maybe a face shield. Lah. To me, basically from young, they always say, uh, <laughs> Which I think now it's not this case really. Yeah. I think now it's about being hygienic, make sure you are more clean, you wash your hands every time. I think this is the new normal. Yeah. We, I've never thought that I could actually do up delivery or get personal drivers to help send out the food, you see. And I never thought that people actually want Sita to be delivered. Because, I mean, 
maybe your house downstairs got zi so why would I deliver it? Yeah, but it proven that this two months, uh, there is some demand for it. So I thought the new normal was actually every day I have to keep up with the news and to make sure that I'm very updated and to see what other changes I need to implement. Yeah, which is very interesting, I would say. The new normal for me, it's office at home. So it's going to affect us uh, in a way, one way or another. So I'm guessing that in the future, we're going to have hawker deliveries. So individual centres are going to have their own hawker deliveries so that we can actually reach more of the clientele outside. I personally feel that for this year is more of surviving. Yeah, so and plan and plan ahead for future plans for probably next year, how are we going to uh, reopen to you guys and start all over again. What will the next year bring? There will be new stories and journeys for sure as our hawkers continue in the belly of a nation.